Welcome to this service. Good to have you with us. Uh, thank you for joining us online. I'm broadcasting from St. John Lutheran Church here in Hamlin. Before we begin, I wanna share just a few announcements of upcoming events and things that we are uh, making note of today. Coming up next Sunday, May 24th, we will have a grab and go food distribution that will take place in the church parking lot here. You'll find more information about this in your bulletin notes as to how you can participate in that. Today is our Senior Send Off Sunday, which I realize is very different under our current circumstances, but today we want to celebrate with Noah Rath, who is graduating from Kendall High School this year. So God's blessings to Noah. You'll find also a, a brief write-up in the bulletin notes about Noah, and we want to include him and his family in our prayers today as they celebrate. If you're wondering when we're going to have more information about reopening here as a congregation, uh, those details are yet to be decided, but we wanna share with you that leaders are meeting and we're working through what that will look like for us as we reopen as a congregation. So please uh, look for uh, more details to come. And uh, speaking of other things coming up, June 7th will be the next time that we plan on having a drive-through communion service here at St. John. You will find out more information about that in the bulletin in the next few weeks. Before we begin our time of worshiping God together, let's take just a, a few quiet moments and prepare our hearts. Uh, the Lord is with us no matter where we may be here today, uh, either here at church or in our home, uh, and we trust that God will bless this time as we gather in his name. all his children to his family through his son father giving his salvation thy forever has been won little children come to me for my kingdom is of these life and love I have to give, mercy for your sin. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, life forever has been won. In the water, in the word, in his promise be assured. Those who are baptized and believe shall be born again. Father welcomes all his children to his family through his Son. Father giving his salvation, thy forever has. 
has been won. Let us daily die to sin. Let us daily rise with him. Walk in the love of Christ our Lord. Live in the peace of God. Comes all his children to his family through his Son. Father, give me his salvation. Thy forever has been mine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The three sad days have quickly sped. He rises glorious from the dead. All glory to our risen head. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Even as we glory in the gift of eternal life, in that hope we spend our days in joyful repentance and faith. Let us confess our sin the sin that still so easily besets us, and receive the full forgiveness of our Lord that our Lord daily provides for us. Lord God, though the strife is over, the battle done, and now is the victor's triumph won, sin still hangs on. We are your baptized people. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us into our Easter joy. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. God, our Father, you protect your children from all that would harm our salvation. Give us the courage of faith and love toward you, that we have boldness to live for you and confess your holy name before all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our epistle reading for today is written in 1 Peter chapter 3. We begin at verse 13. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for the reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience, so that when you are slandered, those who revile, revile you for good behavior, please bear with me here as I turn the page, for good behavior in Christ may be put to shame for it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered, once for sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah, while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus said, If you love me, 
you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father. And I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let's go ahead and sing our next hymn together. You'll find that on pages 10 and 11 in the order of service. Praise the one who breaks the darkness. Would you please bow your heads with me as I pray? Let us pray. Lord God, we come to you today as your dearly loved children who have been purchased with the blood of Christ, freely forgiven, giving and having received the gift of eternal life. We thank you, Lord, for your great goodness to us. Open up, we pray, your word to our hearts and minds. Enable us to receive all that you have for us here today. This we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. It's a fact of life that if you live here in this world, you are going to, in one way or another, experience suffering. Perhaps not all to the same degree or in the same way, but, but going through trials and tribulations is simply part of our existence here. And we're currently living in an example of this, aren't we? COVID-19 is something clearly that has affected everyone. And some people really are suffering in this time. People have 
lost their lives and their livelihoods and their loved ones and other precious things as well. It was Oswald Chambers who once was describing the universal nature of suffering, that everybody goes through it. And I'll paraphrase what he said. He said, in the Gospels, you see three kinds of people going to the cross. The bad thief is crucified, he says. The thief who turns to Christ and is forgiven is crucified. And the Son of God himself is crucified. And what he was saying basically was this, that it doesn't matter who you are. You might be a believer in Christ. You might be an unbeliever. You might be Christ himself, and yet you're going to suffer because everybody goes through those things. Everybody experiences trouble. But that doesn't mean, therefore, that we then should go looking for trouble, does it? Because trouble is going to be something that will find its way to us no matter who we are. And that, in part, is what Peter is getting at in this first reading today. Notice what he says about midway through this passage. He says, It is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. Now, we would like to think that if we do good in this life, that that would pretty much take care of it and that we wouldn't have to go through any trouble because we naturally think of the consequences of doing the right thing as being something good. And yet we also know that it's true that even those who do the right thing are going to suffer. Look at the life of Jesus. He did everything right. He never did anything wrong. And yet, look at what they did to him. Here you have the person who did the very greatest of things, greater than anyone else, and yet we see him suffering in the greatest way imaginable. And so it stands to reason that if our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, goes through those difficult things, that we who follow him will as well. And that's what Paul talks about as he writes to Timothy. He says, those who want to live a righteous life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. And Paul knew whereof he was speaking because as soon as he became a follower of Jesus, he was told right away that he would have to suffer for the name of of Jesus Christ. Now I realize that this is not the kind of message that people like to hear. And it's certainly not the case that, that someone outside of the faith would hear this and say, wow, that sounds really nice. I want to be a follower of Christ so I too can suffer. It doesn't work that way, does it? And we find even as believers in Jesus that we hear a message like this and we would be tempted to want to water things down when it comes to the Christian faith, so as to make it more appealing to others and in essence to suggest to other people, you know what, being a follower of Jesus is a piece of cake, no trouble whatsoever. But that really isn't the message of Jesus in the Gospels, is it? Because it's our Lord, in fact, who says things like this, that, that whoever wants to be a follower of mine must deny himself and daily take up his cross and follow me, which is to say that when Jesus calls us to follow him, he's inviting us to, in a way, follow him to his death, a death whereby we die to ourselves and to our sin and make Jesus our Lord and master in life. And so when we think about what it means to follow Jesus, we really cannot remove suffering from the equation. And it brings up a question that a lot of people, whether they are believers in Christ or not, will ask. And it's this, why do we have to suffer at all? Why is it such a part of this life and our experience here in this world? And there really aren't a lot of satisfying answers to that question. But we look in God's word and we do see that the Lord addresses it. And that God's word makes it very clear that fundamentally the reason why there is suffering in this world is because there is sin in this world. That wherever we find rebellion against God, we are going to find heartache and trouble and we will see that people will suffer. And that's been the case from the very beginning. And no amount of 
human ingenuity or advancements in science or, or politics or education are going to be able to remove suffering from the world. Can those things work for our good? Yes, they can. But can they remove suffering? No, they can't. And yet our God is such that he is actually able to take something so unpleasant as these trials that we go through, and he is actually able to turn them into something for our good and bring wonderful things into our lives. Even as we go through things like a global pandemic, God is able to use them. And one of the ways that he does use them is to prepare us for the life to come. I heard a story about a man who, who was going through some very difficult things because of an economic downturn. I suppose not all that different from what many people are experiencing these days. But he basically lost everything he had. He lost his job, which was a very good one. He lost all of his life savings. And to add to all of that, he actually also lost his wife who died of an illness. And so here he is with nothing nothing except his faith in Christ. Well, one day he was going down the sidewalk, he was out looking for a job, and he came across a couple of stone workers. They were doing some work on a large church there in that town. And he stopped to watch what they were doing. And, and one of the men was, was chiseling out a, a triangular piece of stone. And so the man stopped and asked him what he was doing. And the workman said, well, I'm shaping this stone down here so that it will fit in that space up there. And the man listened to that. And he thought to himself, you know what? That's exactly what I needed to hear. That as I go through this very difficult time down here, God is using it to shape me for the place that he's preparing for me up there. Now, I don't want us to misunderstand. I don't want us to hear or to think, well, does that mean that when I go through suffering, God is making me pay for my sins so that one day I can earn my way into heaven? That's not the case at all, because we know from God's word, and it's very clear, that when it comes to suffering, that's what Jesus experienced, so that he could fully pay for all of our sins, and that when we receive eternal life, it's purely as a gift from God. It's something that Jesus has done completely, and that it's a gift that we simply receive. But one of the ways that he does make us ready to receive this free gift of salvation is to, you might say, chisel away at all of the things that we have in this life so that we get to a point where we realize that the only thing that we have left is Jesus. And that when we have Jesus, we have more than enough. That we have everything and then some as far as it, what it comes that we need. And so we can look at the difficult things, in other words, in life and recognize that even these things, as unpleasant as they may be, are being used in the hand of God to bring me good. And that Jesus, as I mentioned a moment ago, already took and experienced all this suffering in this life. He took our sin and guilt and all that we had done wrong. And he took it to the cross and he paid for it. He paid for your sins and my sins so that we might be with him forever. We can realize that although it seems everything is being taken away from us at times, that we still have Jesus. And so I invite you to ponder that here today. And I would also invite those of you who would be very honest with yourselves and you might realize, you know what, if everything was taken away from me, I really would have nothing at all. In other words, if you don't have Jesus, you really are missing out on the most precious thing that anyone could ever have. And I encourage you to look to him and know that he loves you and that you can receive him and the forgiveness and the life that he came here to this world to bring. Martin Luther once said something very helpful. He said, 
if we consider the greatness and the glory of the life that we shall have when we have risen from the dead, it would not be difficult at all for us to bear the concerns and worries and burdens of this life. If I believe the word, I shall on the last day not only gladly have suffered ordinary temptations and insults and imprisonment, but I shall also say, oh, that I did not throw myself under the feet of all the godless for the sake of the great glory which I now see revealed and which has come to me through the merit of Christ. All of that simply to say that when we get to the end of our life, we will realize that any unpleasant things that we have endured here will simply fade away in comparison to the wonder of what Jesus has prepared for us. He loves us and he is bringing us through this time, even times of suffering, so that he can shape us to be with him. Let's pray. Our Lord, we are so grateful that you love us through good times and through bad, through times of joy and times of sorrow, yes, even in times of suffering. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to grab hold of you so that no matter what we experience here on earth, we will always firmly be grasping you and the grace that you came here to bring. I pray, Lord, today for those who do not yet know Jesus Christ, that they too would take hold of him and experience life in him. These things we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to join with me at this time now and confess with me your Christian faith. And you'll notice on page four in the order of service, the Nicene Creed. We speak these words together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord God, we give you thanks and praise for the new life and salvation with which you have brought beauty into our lives and our world again through the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. We pray that you open the ears of all who hear your word that this salvation come to many in true repentance and faith, the gift of your own Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit mightily, especially upon those called to preach, proclaim, and teach your life-giving word. Give all pastors, teachers, and servants of the church to be faithful in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all who bear the authority of government in our land, give your blessing that tranquility and peace rule our days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When suffering for your truth comes our way, 
remind us of the certain victory that is ours by our baptism into Christ. Give us the vision of your mercy and grace that we endure any opposition to the true faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Visit with your peace and healing all who suffer illness, injury, or any painful difficulty. We pray today for those who are grieving the death of Rebecca Benefield. We also pray for those who are ill and suffering with sickness. We pray for Aaron Agor, Miles Bliss, Steve Campen, Janet Carter, Beverly Chamberlain, Deb Curtis, Rosalie Dewis, Angelo Figueroa, Marie Ginther, Arlene Graham, Marty Graham. We pray for J Chuck and Jackie Holler, Alan Marge Jennings, Lila Jane Johnson, Susan Johnson, Betty Luce, Ashley Librato, Ron Opart, Michelle Palmer, Tim Rose, Logan and Xavier Summer, Christopher Zimmerman, and also those that we mention to you in our hearts. Let not their hearts be troubled or weighed down with any fear, but lift their eyes to your sure and certain promises of eternal life and joy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks to you today, Lord, for the joys and for the good news of life. We thank you for our graduates. We thank you in particular today for Noah Rath and for the education that he has received over the years. We pray that you bless him into the future and that you guide him and his family in the ways of Christ, that the gifts that you have given to them would be used for your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With reverence and affection, we remember before you, O everlasting God, all our departed family and friends who have followed Christ and now are with him in glory. By your grace, keep us faithful and steadfast that we see the joys of your heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray as Jesus has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We finish our worship service together by singing on page 12 in the order of service, Christ the Lord is risen today. Christ the Lord is risen today. your joys and triumphs high, sing ye hands and earth reply. Lord, redeeming work is done, but the fight, the battle won. The stone, the watch, the seal. Christ hath burst the gates of hell. Death in vain forbids his rise. Christ has opened paradise. Lives again our glorious King. 
where our death is now thy sting. Once he died our souls to save, where thy victory, O great. Soar we now where Christ has led, bowing all exalted head, made like him, like him we rise, Hours the cross, the grave, the skies. Hail the Lord of earth and heaven. Praise to thee by both we give. Thee we great triumphant now. Hail the resurrection. 